The coordination chemistry we're discussing was developed in the late 1700s and throughout the 1800s, mostly due to the curiosity of the properties like magnetism and a wide range of colors for these coordination compounds that uh, were often seen as salts. And the current bonding theories didn't explain those things. And if you recall the last video, I discussed where a coordination compound is kind of a blend of covalent compounds who share electrons or ionic compounds. Those compounds are made of ions, positively charged metals and negatively charged nonmetals. So this new type of compound was studied then. And what I'm going to do is show us some examples of some cobalt in its plus three oxidation state and shown as an, an adduct. So the dot means there are six ammonia molecules in the crystal structure. Over here this is still cobalt plus three because that's the chloride ion with five ammonias there and cobalt chloride or cobalt three chloride with four ammonias ha can either be purple or green depending on the position of the chlorides in that compound. So I'm going to draw each one of these as the coordination compound formula with the brackets showing the coordination sphere. And in this particular compound all of the ammonias are the ligands. So actually let me draw it like this. So the cobalt and then around this cobalt in an octahedral geometry there are six neutral ligands. So this would be a monodentate ligand. Remember nitrogen's got the lone pair. The cobalt plus three acts like a Lewis acid and accepts lone pairs or accepts electrons. And of course NH3 is a base and then the chlorides are outside of the coordination sphere and those just serve to keep the entire compound neutral. So if I were to try to draw that in an octahedral geometry, I wanted to show a picture of an octahedron. It's a little bit large. But this is more of a three-dimensional picture of an octahedron. So eight equilateral triangles that are together form this uh, geometry with six vertices and so we can get up to six ligands around a central metal so the metal would actually be in the center of this octahedron and the ligands would coordinate the metal at these sites. This is going to be very important later when we talk about crystal field theory and two of the d orbitals actually uh, point in these exact same six directions. But for now I'm going to draw the octahedral geometry like this so our cobalt plus three is in the middle and six ammonia molecules at each of the vertices of the octahedron and the lone pair on the nitrogen. Each nitrogen would be attracted to that cobalt plus center and then so that is our coordination sphere and then there are three chloride ions so if this were dissolved in water this would leave us with four ions in solution so the entire complex is one ion so the complex in this case would have an oxidation number of three since cobalt is plus three and ammonia is neutral. So this species when it's dissolved or as a salt is orange. This species has one chloride that's inside the coordination sphere. So we'll see that in the uh, formula drawn for that. So there are five NH3s and then one of those chloride ions 
is acting as a ligand. And then two of those chloride ions are outside of the coordination sphere. So I'm probably going to run out of room here. But here's our cobalt in the center. And then in this case, one of the chloride ions is part of the coordination sphere and the other five vertices. The nitrogen is the donor atom and coordinates the metal. So this would be three ions in solution. So this entire ion has a charge of plus two now because that is still a chloride ion and our cobalt has an oxidation state of plus three in all four of, of these compounds. So this chloride is in the coordination sphere. So this has two extra chloride ions in order for this formula to have a net charge of zero. So in this particular cobalt complex, there are only three ions in solution one complex ion and two chlorides. This complex could either be cis or trans. So cis means that, I'll actually draw that. Oh, let me put the, the formula here. This would have four NH3s, four neutral ammonias, two chloride ions, inside of the coordination sphere and then one chloride outside acting as this ion to neutralize the charge to zero. So cis means that the two chlorides are next to each other. So if our cobalt is in the middle, if you've had uh, organic chemistry, that's kind of a big deal. So cis means they're right next to each other. And then the other four sites would have the ammonias, the neutral molecule NH3. So our coordination sphere now has a charge of plus one. And that's because the two chloride ligands still are the chloride ion. So remember chloride is very happy when it has one extra electron. So the chloride ion is very stable with eight electrons around it. So one chloride ion outside of the sphere to balance this charge to zero. And the trans, we can't tell the difference from just the formula, but the cis or the trans description, trans meaning across. So that means that the chloride ions are um, across, let me just write that first. So trans, since there are two chlorides, they would be across each from each other. And then the four remaining sites on the octahedron would be coordinated with the neutral molecule ammonia. So again, trans means across, cis means next. Uh, that's not really what we're concerned about here. But in this case, with this formula, four ammonias and only two, and two chlorides as the ligand, there are only two ions in solution. The entire coordination sphere is an ion and then the one chloride. So seeing this, uh, just led to this theory and Alfred Werner did a lot of work with this. What I want to do now is show us just a kind of a wide variety of possible formulas because our ligands as we can see from here can either be negatively charged ions or neutral molecules. So the ions that are responsible for the entire formula having a net charge of zero uh, might be positive metal ions, 
like sodium or potassium or negatively charged ions like chlorides or fluorides. So I have a few examples of that on the next page. So for example, if we look at uh, a coordination sphere of iron 3, I'll just let us know that the oxidation state is plus 3 and the cyanide ion coordinates that metal Cyanide, remember, is a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen. And the only way this dot structure works is if the entire formula steals an electron from somewhere. So cyanide, we might see it just written as CN minus. So this is a negative ion, six negative one and one positive three means the net charge on the complex ion is minus three. So in this case the salt may have three sodiums or it may have a calcium and a sodium or oops, we could have uh, three potassium ions out here so as long as the entire charge on the compound is neutral, oops, then we've got a valid formula. Again, the coordination sphere, the iron 3 would be in the center of an octahedron and six cyanides around that metal coordinating it probably on the nitrogen but that's not what we're looking at here so there's the coordination sphere this whole entire complex is an ion so it has a minus three charge and then there would be three potassium ions also in solution so I'll just put one over here for illustration and if we had a calcium and one sodium, since calcium is plus two and sodium is plus one, those charges would still all add up to zero. I've got another possible formula with uh, iron plus three again. So if the ligand is neutral, then that means that the entire complex is going to have a negative charge because the metal in the center is always positive. That's what draws those ligands toward it. So the metal in the center has a positive charge acting like a Lewis acid and accepting electrons. So in this case, since water is neutral, the entire complex has a charge of plus three. So again, we might have uh, we could have fluorides out here, but we'll stick with, with chlorides. Okay. So same central metal. Each metal has a coordination number of six. So each one of these ligands are monodentate, meaning they only bite the metal with one donor atom. The formulas are going to be very different depending on whether the ligand has a negative charge and on the previous page we saw chloride acting as a ligand as well as a an ion in solution so that the charge is equal to zero. So just to summarize uh, here the oxidation state of the metal that's kind of the primary valence is plus three and the charge, I'll say, or the oxidation state of the complex, and this would be the cyanide complex, is also a plus three. And the coordination number of the metal is six. And almost without uh, exception, of course there's exceptions to every rule in chemistry, 
But at this level, if we see a coordination number of 6, we know that automatically means an octahedral geometry. I don't know if I spelled that right or not. Uh, going back here, um, we may see compounds uh, in a few videos where there's only a coordination number of 4. So in that case, we'll end up with either a square planar geometry or a tetrahedral geometry. But because of the shape of an octahedron, which is just a geometrical shape, considering the metal in the center, an octahedron has six vertices, and any atom that is at the n equals 3 or below on the periodic table has orbitals to accommodate an expanded octet. And so we'll see that's very common for the transition metals, which have 3D electrons.